You still sleeping with her? You can make another paternity issue right now. You was just with her a week ago, and you was with her for this baby and had the paternity issue on the last child. None of you all should be shaking your head. You're all in it. You all guilty. He was sleeping with me at one point in time behind Rachel's back. Since you want to be up here and bat for everything, tell the truth. This that is was... why you were with Delonte. I'm... No, it was not. Me and Delonte yes. were friends. We had just started talking. The boyfriend of my boyfriend was the father the of whole the child. Time. Right. Dad came to my house and told me they had a DNA test with somebody else, so I moved on with my life. Ms. Carr's games dragged Mr. Johnson to the paternity court. Mr. Johnson said that he is tired of 18-year-old doubts and he wants to find the truth once and for all. But the defendant stated that the plaintiff has been dodging the DNA test since the day he was informed. Let's move to plaintiffs. Mr. Johnson, you say the defendant, Mrs. Carr, has been playing an emotional DNA game with you over her daughter's paternity for the past 18 years. You've brought her to court to finally end this game and prove you are not her daughter's biological father. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. So the judge started with their relationship recap. It was revealed that they were not even in a relationship. Then how could they end up producing a baby? And why did she shove you, are the father, in the plaintiff's face? Take me back to the nature of this relationship. You all used to be boyfriend and girlfriend? No, ma'am. My uncle married her auntie. Okay. And they adopted her. I used to go over their house and help him out, like cutting grass and things of that nature, and I would stay the night and they would allow us to sleep in the same room. We had sex one time. However, from mother's testimony, it was revealed that she informed the alleged father about the baby, but he dumped her because there was another guy in the picture who was proven to be the father. And at some point, you realize you're pregnant. Yes, ma'am. At the time, I was young. I was just coming on my menstrual, so this was still new to me. So it was brought to my attention that my menstrual was late or it had not come on when it was supposed to. So I was taken to the doctor and later on determined I was pregnant. Nonetheless, the plaintiff came across Miss May after many years. He told the court that he bumped into the baby and she called her daddy. But Ms. Carr acted cold even in this emotional moment. In a grocery store, she runs up to me. <laughs> she runs up to me. Like, daddy, <laughs> I'm... I'm shocked at the moment, like, what the, wait a minute, daddy, when I tell you I'm looking for cameras to pop out, I'm found I was on a prank show or something. Like, uh, how old know? is she? She's about five or six at this time. Your Honor, this is my first time ever hearing this story about the grocery store. Okay, so but let's hear it. Me, she run up to me like, daddy, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like... Even after no DNA test and strong doubt, Mr. Johnson claimed to step up to the plate. But if he was there for the baby girl, then why didn't he have a father relationship with her at this age? He explained himself like this. She's yours, you don't need to get a DNA test, and she looked like another family member when she was younger, and so I'm just full of Honor, emotion, and true. so against my better judgment, even without the DNA test, I start accepting Miss May as my child. I know that I need to get this DNA test based on what they told me in the past. So to get an idea of what had happened all of these years, the judge called in Miss May. She told the court that she had seen her alleged biological father years ago, even though Mr. Johnson got emotional on her daughter's testimony. I was not. And so, when's the last time you saw Mr. Johnson? Last time I saw Mr. Johnson was the fifth grade summer, was probably around hmm. 2010. So you have not seen her or laid eyes on her? No, ma'am, and she's extremely beautiful. <laughs> yes. However, both sides continued to put the allegations on each other. And all of the negation and neglect around the paternity issue confused Judge Lake, so she has to say this. The next moment you're not, it gets really confusing. I mean, it just, it, it is amazing to me how much you <laughs> all were doing. You did everything but get a DNA test. I mean, <laughs> everything. And now, yeah. Amber is the one who's, who's hurting. At the end of the day. Tough. Thinking you're her biological father and you only showed up for a birthday party and... I mean, Amber, what was that like? Well... Either way, both sides and the judge were hoping the plaintiff was the father. As if not, it will damage the young girl for her whole life. Let's see if fate will have mercy on them or not. Now it was time for the result. Mr. Johnson, you are her father. How do you feel? How do you feel? Absolutely, honey. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs>
We came here for a beautiful young woman who deserves to know who her biological father is. And now we have that answer. Yes, we do. Mr. Morris is in paternity court to claim the paternity of his 29-year-old daughter. But the woman standing across the aisle is not ready to believe the plaintiff, as she believes that her mother has lied enough to her and only DNA proof can put an end to the situation. Mr. Morris, you say you are 100% certain that you are the biological father of the 29-year-old woman standing across the aisle and want this court to put an end to years of confusion, lies, and doubt. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So the trial begins with Mr. Morris telling his story about how he met the woman of his dreams at a dancing party, and they were together for two years. And even after they had broken up, the defendant came back for his daughter, but the mommy pushed him away like this. Well, at the time when I talked to her, the two days I was in town, to see Mr. Smith, um, we had an issue and she told me to my face that you no, know, none of her children were mine, so I left. So how old was Miss Brister at this time? I, w I would say she had to be five, maybe five or six. So, Miss Smith, you remember telling him that Miss Brister was not his child? Yeah. Seeing things like these can easily stir up paternity doubt. But in the mommy's defense, she didn't want to get back with her ex. She further had Miss Brister believed that the guy on her birth certificate was her father. My mom taken me to get a DNA test, and I didn't, I didn't remember the results at that time, but I do have a faint memory of her saying that he wasn't my father. You brought an exhibit for the court? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it, please. <clears throat> this is just a timeline of some of the things that she's told me over the years. All these sudden revelations were causing turmoil in the defendant's life. It was hurtful and confusing. And when the judge asked Miss Smith why she had lined up so many stories, she confessed that she was doing so to protect her daughter from her father's style. And how old were you when this happened? Um, this started when you were how old? This started when I was, I think around like nine, eight, nine, maybe 10, when I was told when but I remember. Th that when you remember her saying that the man on my birth certificate wasn't my father. But when the judge asked Mr. Morris about this, he told the court that he had no idea about any of the stores going around. Further, he informed the court that he was charged with the defendant's child support. However, Miss Brister seemed unconcerned about all of it. I don't remember that. But if you've known that I was your daughter, it's kind of like, why didn't you reach out? Why didn't because your family reach out? Because nobody, I was under, I nobody was said so anything much. in all this, all these years. So now that I'm about to be 30, you know, and here it is, you saying you're 100% sure. By now, it seemed like that trio was stuck on a roller coaster of fate, and all of these years had gone by without the truth being revealed. So I guess it was about the right time to set the record straight. Mr. Morris. Yes, Sean. You are not her father. Oh. What? I'm very sorry. Can I hug my daughter? Absolutely. Is that okay? Sorry. You can stand with your daughter, ma'am. Miss Brister, are you okay? I am. I'm glad to know. It's one step closer. Is he or isn't he? The tension is tangible as Mr. Nelson's skeptical nature threatens to shatter their relationship. But today, the truth will finally be revealed as the DNA results come in. All eyes turn to the plaintiffs, eager to put an end to the uncertainty once and for all. Ms. Harden, you have opened your case today in hopes of saving your relationship with the defendant. You say, due to a misunderstanding, he is now denying your two-month-old daughter, Sophia. Now Nelson, you are certain he is the father and once proven, you want his help raising your daughter. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So the trial began on the note of, the defendant was being irresponsible and careless towards the child, and he admitted all the plaintiff's testimony like this. Delonte doesn't help me with anything. He doesn't help me financially. He won't pick up a diaper. He won't watch her for 15 minutes while I go to the store. He won't watch her for 15 minutes while I get in the shower. He walked past her like she Casper. When she cried, he'd be like, hey, get your daughter your daughter crying your daughter wants you get her get her he don't help me at all one the pregnancy question was important to ask to proceed with the trial let's find out the side of the story of when the pregnancy news was revealed and how it raised so many questions like this yes your honor tell me what happens when you find out you're pregnant at first i panicked because i didn't know how he would respond he didn't seem like the person to want to have a kid he didn't seem like a kid person but i mean that's true. so why were you having unprotected sex with this young man and you didn't think he was the kid type and why are you following 
following behind. It was painful to watch a grown woman cry in mid-trial like that due to the fact of being alone like this. I didn't really have anybody. My mom died when I was 12. My dad's not in my life. My grandmother, um, she's not really there either. <laughs> OK, now I understand what's going on. That's all right. We come here to tell the truth. And if that's your truth, you say it. Yes, ma'am. However, the defendant decided not to be easy on the baby mama. And even the baby girl's birth didn't melt down the ice shield of this ignorant man. So take me to the birth. He was semi there, I call it. Least when I, I was started. There. A lot of, my, a lot of, okay, a lot of, but that don't count. That don't count. That don't count. That don't count. He watched her be pushed out. He waited for my daughter to be weighed and wiped off, and he walked. He told me that's a white man's baby, and walked out of the hospital room. Wow! How can someone leave such an important thing? And if you think that is too much, see what he did next intentionally. When we were on the way to the hospital, I called him multiple times and said, "Hey, make sure you grab your ID. You need your ID to sign her birth certificate." He left his ID at home on purpose, bought an empty wallet. Well, on purpose. It's on purpose. Same thing, yeah. So, Mr. Nelson, you say that you didn't sign that birth certificate purposefully because yes, you have doubt. Yes, Your Honor. There was another guy in the picture who could be the potential father. The plaintiff even had evidence to support their claim. Okay, Your Honor. It all started. We went back to Arkansas, got our own place together. Around that time, her ex boyfriend, John, and his baby mother, which is Rachel at the time, didn't have nowhere to go. So they wanted to come stay with us. But that being her ex boyfriend, I thought it was disrespectful. After this, we got to know that the mommy was caught after sexual intercourse. Their equation was serious enough to raise doubt. When we were going over that testimony, you were not vehemently denying anything. Correct. So you do admit that you were intimate with this couple. Yes, I do. And you admit you were intimate with them when Mr. Nelson left the house. No. Nevertheless, Judge Lauren asked Ms. Harden's ex about the baby's paternity. He denied and he even brought evidence to support his testimony. Do you think you're Sophia's father? That's what I want to know. No, it's, it's impossible. Yeah, now you don't. So like, why, was... why are you denying that? Are they now? testifying that you were on the phone saying, what are we going to do about our baby? You know that's my baby. I never said that they're both delusional. You never claimed this child. No, actually, I got I got text messages and screenshots with Pinky texting me asking me to take a DNA test for the baby because she thinks that the baby's mine. Above all, don't lie to yourself. Judge Lauren had enough of their lies and pinning excuses on each other in a circle, but the baby mama denied all the claims this way. All right, Miss Davis, thank you for your testimony. It was very enlightening. Now you say your husband, Mr. Patterson, said he's the father. Mr. Mr. Patterson, you say Mr. Nelson is the father. Mr. Nelson, you say Mr. Patterson is the father. Ms. Harden, you told Mr. Nelson he's the father and Mr. Patterson he's the father. No, I did not tell John he was the father of my child. Well, Judge Lauren articulated some schooling for all of them because they thought of producing a baby as a fun part only. Okay, so here we go. This is a mess. I say this in this courtroom all the time. Sex is not a board game. It's not like Monopoly where it's better if you play with more people. It's not. It really isn't. It just gets messier. And at the end of the day, y'all just all up here arguing. So all this little sex and, and, and now we gonna have a threesome and now we doing this. No, that, 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 that's not really how it works. Let's see if that DNA envelope has something good for her or not. Pertaining to whether Mr. Patterson or Mr. Nelson is the father of two month old Sophia Nelson. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Nelson. You are the biological father. I just want to say I apologize to you. A serious medical condition has led to a paternity dispute that could shake things up. Ms. Fisher has come forward claiming that Mr. Stewart is the biological father, and she's not backing down. With a DNA test, the truth will finally come to light. Let's move to plaintiffs. Ms. Fisher, you're here to prove that Mr. Stewart is your daughter Kalia's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. You state that your daughter has a serious medical condition, and it is imperative that you know the father's medical history. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Judge Lauren straightforwardly hopped up into the pregnancy part. It slipped out that the defendant is denying paternity from day one. But why? Um, well, 
I woke up one morning, I wasn't feeling well, and I've been pregnant before, so I, could, I pretty much knew before I took the test I was pregnant. And you immediately said, Mr. Stewart, this is your... I showed it to him in his first reaction. <laughs> it ain't mine. <laughs> that's what he said. Yes, that's exactly what he said. Exactly. Even after the denial, how did their relationship continue? Later revealed that he was dating her just because he was bored. That's slick. After this is over, did the relationship continue? Yes, he was just at my house like a week and a half ago. Oh, so... Oh. I mean, I got bored. Oh. I got bored, you know? You got bored? Yes, sir. Sure. When you get bored, you go over Miss Fisher's house and have unprotected sex? Sometimes. That's smart. There was another guy in the picture, and he was Miss Fisher's first pick to father her child. The plaintiff even had some information to support his claim. You stated that you knew for certain that Miss Fisher was sleeping with other men. Yes, sure. What do you know, and how do you know it? Well, she named another potential father as the as the biological father, and then on top of that, another man another man signed the birth certificate. Wait a minute. She named another man as the biological father. Yes, sure. Well, this did seem a bit odd. What drags someone to court if you won't let them get listed as a father? Instead of telling a man to step up on the plate, calling him deadbeat, dad seems petty, doesn't it? Because he chose to give her his last name. Uh, he did that on his own. She just dragged my name around the town and stuff, man, telling everybody that I'm just a deadbeat dad and stuff, man. Come on. I ain't said nothing about you. You the one be walking around for us come back. Man, that's what you just, that's what you just, that's what you just out here saying that I'm a dead B. I don't do nothing for her. I ain't got nothing. So the other potential father was escorted into the courtroom. The suspect claimed that the plaintiff is a compulsive liar and she has done things like this before. I'm not denying that I'm not her father. I'm denying because Miss Fisher, she always been lying to me, you know what I'm saying? Because we already done went through this one time with an older child. What do you mean? <laughs> we start inboxing each other on Facebook. It always starts with Facebook. <laughs> Don't yeah, We start inboxing each other, you know what I'm saying? Then we got real corny, you know? However, baby mama continued her game of imposing possibilities on men. But Judge Lauren was irked, and she articulated some facts like that. They have a sexual relationship. Yes, ma'am. And this happened before. Yes, ma'am. With an older child. Yes, ma'am. And then when the child was born, you thought it was your child? Yes, and I was taking care of the child, you know what I'm saying? Me and my mom. So, Miss Fisher, you told him it was his child. No, that's not what I told him. I told him the same thing we're going through now, that it was a chance. As the testimony proceeded, it revealed that the baby has got some serious condition and it's vehement to know about her father for her treatment. Let's see this part. The doctor says she has a hole right in the middle of her heart and she has too much blood going to her lungs. And so in two months, they might have to do surgery if the hole doesn't close. Oh my goodness. Do either of you gentlemen have heart issues? No, y'all. You don't. No, Your Honor. You don't either. And so finding out who her father is Im is important to you. Why? And that is the part where things fell short. How could they be irresponsible and dumb in a sexual relationship which can produce a baby? Nobody should play around when it comes to paternity. A beautiful baby and, and then needed an answer from me that I can't give because I was irresponsible and now her health may be affected because of that? That's not okay. And the reason why I'm going so hard on you all is because you're still up to it and you admitted it in court today. Oh, uh, yeah. Valid point. No child deserves to suffer like this. Let's see if the baby girl is getting her full-time daddy or not. Mr. Stewart, you are not the father. <laughs> oh. Don't clown. Don't clown. <laughs> Don't you dare clown in here. Miss Fisher, there's something going on because you're just giving your body away for free. You're just making babies. How many other children do you have besides Kalia? Two. Two. Do they have the same father? No. After struggling with 20 years of child support, Mr. Conway stepped up in court to prove that he is not the father of his ex's child, whereas Ms. Cruz claimed that the alleged daddy is denying her son in order to dodge the child support money. Let's move to plaintiff's assertions. Mr. Conway, you are here today to prove you are not the father of 20-year-old Trayvon Cruz, yet find yourself in court today owing more than $53,000 in back child support. You claim that you've been arrested numerous times as a result of the child support and you're ready to prove once and for all that you're not his father. Yes, you are. The plaintiff asserted that paying child support has left his life devastating and even after paying Dabla, he ended up in jail several times. I am wondering if that was the case, then why didn't he get legal help before? Let's find out what exactly he did except for being a deadbeat dad. Yes, Your Honor, you know, um, basically this $53,000, they say, oh, well, I'm paying child support in Nebraska, but he has two orders. One order in 
Nebraska, one order in Missouri. I didn't know nothing about exactly where they was in 2005 until I got arrested. And, and you've never hired an, an attorney to deal with this issue? Ma'am, this, this, this is the problem. If I had to get an attorney, I had to get an attorney from Missouri. But I live in Nebraska. However, the defendant got nothing from the alleged father. He was absent financially and emotionally. Then to whom he was paying for 20 years. And why Ms. Cruz spun the victim card that the alleged dad tried to play like this. Edwin has not did nothing for my son. You, you didn't let him have him. two to, You can call the card $29, this, this. I call Nebraska because he tried to say this story a long time ago that I'm paying in Nebraska. I call and I say, well, what? You know, give my Why is Missouri so worried about it? tried to straighten Why this don't out. Why to straighten it out? They said, we don't have... I said, look, this guy's calling me, harassing me, saying they're taking 700 and something out of my check. However, as the trial proceeded, Judge Lauren asked him why his name is not on the birth certificate. He knitted a whole, I am not the enemy story in the court. Come on, man. You are unbelievable. If your story is true, then why would she end up with claims saying you are the father for sure? He was there when I actually had the baby, but they don't just bring the birth certificate. Here's your baby. Here's a birth certificate sign. No, you have to stick around. He was there for the joy and then he's gone like he, like he always did. He wanted to call and come and look, you know, oh, that's my son when he's in football practice. One time of his life, no birthdays, no nothing. But no, he, this is all a lie. He's just now so coming up with all Mr. this. Mr. Conway. When Mr. Trevon testified, the little relationship recap was given. It turned out that potential daddy had always been the deadbeat. This comment really pained the boy in paternity question. The hurt in Trevon's eyes speaks volumes that Mr. Conway hadn't treated him the way he deserved, but plaintiff ruined that moment with his cocksureness. A couple times he came down to visit me. Uh, he tried to call me when he did, uh, but I was, I'm, me and him is way different. I remember him taking me into a strip club, strip club to why call, because he, he said he wanted to call, and he said he wanted yes, to call. Yes, he did. And see when the when the, plant, when the when let the, the young man testify. He said he wanted to see when the bus was coming. The dude at the door said I can't come in because I'm too young. I sat down back at the by Salvation Army and the Greyhound until he came out. However, that young man can teach a whole lot of grown folks how to act, and it made me feel like Daddy needs to walk over his son's footsteps. As this lad has actually proved, maturity doesn't come with age. My son has every I, I, pay, I pay for everything. Every week I get paid. I call my girlfriend. I'm telling her, what do you need? I don't care that's what a, it that's is. That's good for you. Bro, you're you're supposed to do that, bro. I didn't get the same for you. I didn't get the same for you. You was, not a you was mine. Bro, and real you was mine. Man, stop being in the streets, man. And, and what man, streets you talking kid. about, Trey? Man, man, I've been working all my life. I've never had that junk your mama tell me. Oh, my. The plaintiff was really triggered and started a whole argument. So Judge Lauren had to hop up into the argument to cut his show off. Yes, ma'am. It's time to shut down the chatterbox. Stood here today, and he's talked about how this has affected him. And honestly, Mr. Conway, I didn't see you miss a beat. I mean, your mouth just running like a motor. You say like you didn't even stop to listen to this young man. And so, as much as I want to say, oh, well, there's no way this man couldn't care about this young child. There's no way he could ignore him. With that all said, it was really draining to watch a young boy be sad like this due to not being accepted by his father. The only call left was to move on to the conclusive part of this trial. Let's get those results and find out if Mr. Trevor will get his dad finally or not. Mr. Conway, you are his father. Oh, That's wow. what I'm talking about. I'm so, this is... Yes, sweetheart, what would you like to say, Mr. Cruz? I accept your apology, but honestly, after coming on this after 20 years, it's so embarrassing how you yes, just talk about my mom. Yes, like, it is. I didn't know. I ever, like... Though separated, still stirred drama. Ms. Martin dragged Mr. Damphier into the court, saying that he is a worse man who has not entirely accepted her daughter, whereas Mann asserted that he doesn't believe he is the dad of his on-and-off girlfriend's daughter after he found scandalous texts. So let's see what both sides have to say. Ms. Martin, you say your ex, Mr. Damphier, is a cruel and petty little man who refuses to fully accept that he is is the father of your four-year-old daughter, Amaya. You claim Mr. Damphier's callous indifference towards your daughter has gone on for far too long, and you intend to prove paternity today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The trial began on this note. It turned out that the little baby girl testified through video, and Mum stated that her daughter is hurt because her daddy mistreats her like crap. That sounds really sounds disgusting. Callous and cruel. He treats my daughter like crap. He's also play favoritism 
autism. Amaya has told me on numerous times that she's sad that her dad don't love her. Did a video testimony of how she fails. She did? Yeah. And you submitted that to the yes, court? I did. Let's take a look. That is mean, because he always makes me sad. It came out that he didn't treat the baby with affection and love, but not only due to paternity doubt, but also because of the fact that Ms. Martin has been cheating on him. Ugh, man, that's ugly to even hear that. Why give punishment to a child for a mother's mistakes? I feel I'm not the father. Amber's always messaging guys. She texts guys all the time. So I feel I'm not the father. I mean, you are her father and you know it. She looks just like you. I've never cheated on you, Anthony. And you know So that. what was the nature of your relationship with Mr. Damn Fear? However, the supposed baby's father accused the plaintiff of cheating him on, but forgot to tell that he is the president of that game and not one or two. He had six girlfriends at once. We started out as friends and then we eventually became serious. And through our relationship, I discovered he wasn't honest. He was texting other females. He was talking to other females. He had six other girlfriends at the time. Six? You were six. cheating on me. You, had, you were always messaging people. Yeah. Even though the defendant was disclosed, he didn't stop playing. He asserted that he had multiple reasons for denying the paternity. But man, your all testimony is not something to believe in. That's more kind of spilling a bluff. I got multiple reasons why I think I'm not the father. She um, always messaging guys, like I said. I have a, a, for one instance, she came home late and I was messenger her, calling her, like we're, she never didn't respond. And then when she come home, her hair all messed up, smelling like sex. And um, Wait, I, what? I, I, I respond like, where you been at? She didn't have no proper excuse for where she been. Furthermore, baby mama stated that when he came to know about this, he stepped back. And the reason he explained to the court for denying a little baby girl will blow your mind like that. Let Anthony know I was pregnant. And his reaction, he was not thrilled. I had other kids. I got, like, I had two other kids at that time. Okay, we were having sex without using condoms. What happens when you have sex without using condoms? A baby can occur. I never finished. Every time we used to have sex, I used to pull out for a whole year. Okay. And you never got pregnant. Up next, Mr. Damphier told the court that baby mama herself told him that he is not the father of her child. But later, it turned out that due to being insulted by him ruthlessly in front of her girl, she took that step and placed another guy in the picture like this. Amber tells me I'm not the father of the baby. I, I have said that. She told, being me. told him I he's have. not the father? And then I showed him and a random... she showed me a picture of a guy and said, this is Amaya's dad. Oh and they look, my they God. Look more alike than, they look more alike than, than me and her. Like, they, they resemble each other more than we do. And you admit you did it, Miss Martin. I did. Back and forth accusations were not helping in solving this paternity issue. So Judge Lauren dismissed them and asked to get those results to settle this conflict once and for all. Let's peep if DNA test results will change Mr. Damphier for good. Mr. Damphier, you are the father. Exactly. I do know. The fact that you apologize, Mr. Damphier, but you're going to have to apologize to another person, too. And I see the way you're looking at her and the emotion in your eyes that you feel some level of regret about that. The sudden breakup of a couple has led them to court. Ms. Vaught has accused Mr. Lindsay of being the father of her child and has taken legal action to prove it. However, Mr. Lindsay denies her claims and alleges that Ms. Vaught tricked him into a paternity trap and now he wants DNA proof. Let's find out if DNA and lie detector tests will help this feuding couple. Ms. Ms. Vaught, you say your ex-boyfriend, Mr. Lindsay, abruptly ended your relationship due to paternity doubts. But today, you want to prove he is your daughter Shelby's dad. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Lindsay, you say the plaintiff, Ms. Vaught, has committed paternity fraud. You claim she deceived you into believing that you fathered her daughter, but today plan to prove you are not her father. Yes, Your Honor. The defendant claimed that everything in their relationship was good enough until the plaintiff brought other men into the picture. And what he he says next will blow your mind. No, he went away years. for six months of the two and a half years. And we still was on and off, Yana. When we first met, everything was going good. We was doing good. Then little stuff started popping up with her. What popped up? Her talking to people, some stuff popped up in her. She her, can't um, have a conversation, Mr. She, Lindsay. She can have a your conversation. Your Honor, he talks. But he, how many, how many conversations your Honor. Are you gonna have with Matt? However, the supposed baby daddy asserted they were not together at the time Ms. Vaught conceived the baby, and to support his claims, he brought a conception calendar. The dates add up. I know the day I got pregnant because it was New Year's. Mr. Year's Lindsay, Year's what are you saying? The dates don't add up. The dates Explain. don't add up. If the baby was conceived in September, that would mean December, February, we would have had a be 
together. We wasn't together on them days. Mm. What is that, Mr. Lindsay? This is a calendar right here. Ron, will you hand that you, to me, please? Just to show you. Next up, the plaintiff revealed that Mr. Lindsay is now playing innocent, but he has been cheating on her as well. Oh, so I think the only thing that jeopardized their relationship is mistrust. See? I don't know if she just be saying it just to be saying And I said, I you cheated on you? You, you? When you I was pregnant? Me, man. Oh, I'm gonna go cheat on you. Oh, today. because he cheats on me, Your Honor. Let's be real. Look, look. When you go tit for tat, and he goes worse, you than end up in a He's situation where you don't yeah, trust one another. So all of this mistrust, it just fuels the doubt. It does. It's honestly. just growing and growing. Cause he's sitting there, he's dead serious. He's just like, I don't know if it's my child. Due to their unresolved conflicts, Judge Lake approved the request for a lie detector test. Let's peep at the results to determine what is coming for them. Is daddy going to repent or not? Well, I read these lie detector results. What do you believe we will find out? The truth? The truth. That's all it is. That's what the point of the test was for. It's to tell the truth. Ms. Vaught, you were asked, did you have sexual contact with the man who sent you an Instagram message about which window to knock on? You said no. The lie detector determined you were being deceptive. True. Nevertheless, over lie detector test results, the alleged baby daddy heated up the situation with his false comments and reacted ridiculously like this. Yes, Your Honor. I give Shelby nothing but respect and everything in every way. I don't treat this man no type of way. He feels like that because of something somebody results. said. I got he, no more to say. The you got the speak, results? The, the results speak for itself, unless you argue with the lie detector, man. Oh, my. Why doesn't he accept already that he is the father? So if you were not sure about the baby, then what was the point of being a good guy to baby mama? Furthermore, he claimed that Ms. Vaught tricked him into signing the birth certificate. If he felt, Your Honor, that Shelby wasn't his, why would you give her your name? Why would you sign the birth certificate? Your Honor, when I was in labor, he was at work, okay? He ran 10 blocks up the street, made sure he stopped at the gift store to get me a balloon teddy bear and a flower. A guy, okay, being a I good be guy. Being a good guy. Up next, he filed a petition in the court Room to remove his name from the birth certificate if it is proved that he is not the father. Looks like baby daddy has come prepared in the court. It comes out that she's his daughter, we can work it out because there's we no reason it. I don't want to be with him. So this petition he presented is basically a request to change Shelby's name if in fact she's not his biological child. He wants his name, Lindsay, off Shelby of the birth certificate. Don't forget Shelby. Okay, excuse me, your honor. Her name oh, is your name. Her middle name is <laughs> Renee, right? Despite a lot of drama, they didn't get agree on one point. Think Things were all over and nothing helped in resolving the dispute. The only way is to find out what the DNA envelope is hiding in it. Let's get those results and watch if it bring happiness to baby and her mommy. Mr. Lindsay, you are the father. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm so happy. Can I have that, please? Can I have that? Oh, you yes, want to put because... this up in the house? Yep, I'm not sure I am. You gonna put I'm this on the refrigerator? Every family member. I can only imagine what it feels like it for hurt. nine months. You have it a hurt. beautiful baby. Ms. Nichols has summoned Mr. Young into court to prove he's the father of her 13-month-old baby, but he claims that her sugar daddy is the daddy, and there is no possible way he fathered the baby because she was already pregnant before their relationship began, and now he wants DNA proof of it. Ms. Nichols, you've dragged the defendant, Mr. Young, to court today because you say he denies he's the father of your 13-month-old daughter, Sine. Yes, Your Honor. You say it's time for him to step up and take responsibility. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Young, you say you refuse to accept Sine because you claim that Ms. Nichols was already pregnant when you began your relationship yeah. and you refuse to allow her to trap you with another man's baby. Yes, Your Honor. The trial began with Mr. Young's explanation behind denying the child and thinking that the plaintiff is just trying to pin her baby on him. He stated that baby mama is doing all this just for the financial cause. Well, she doesn't like the fact that I moved on and I have a new relationship and she's all about getting money out of me. She knows that I was treating her good. She's been lying since the first time I met her, just making my life miserable. Have you been making his life miserable, Ms. Nichols? Uh, no, Your Honor, I have not. He started denying my daughter before his new relationship. He actually started denying her when I moved out of his house because he was cheating. But baby mama told the court that he was denying baby just because he had started his new relationship and to conceal his cheating he had made this all mess. Mm. So stooping low for the betterment of himself, that's a selfish move. I've known Mr. Young for 19 years. We met when we were 15 years old, and when I met him again on Facebook, you know, we automatically moved in together, you know? That's a lie. We didn't automatically move in. She hit me up on Facebook talking about because she'd been trying to find me, and she wouldn't want to see me. And so when she came over, she was still on the same thing she was when I first met her, trying to get back in the, in the bed with me, like, like always. Well, I get that. The defendant is now just trying to 
to be innocent. But what he has done is not something that innocent people do. It turned out he also had a sugar daddy like that. He's a friend of mine. Do you have sex with him? No, I do not. You sh oh, you don't have How sex How old is he? 73. 73. Whoa. And he calls him your sugar daddy. What does he do for you? Any and everything I ask him to. Mm, right, exactly. And, and your honor, since he wants to go there, he had no problem with this man when we were hungry, but, and I would call him and he would bring us something to eat. Next up, he claimed that she used to be intimate with her sugar daddy just for the sake of money. So boy, if you knew already then, why did you continue your sexual relationship with Ms. Nichols? Don't go down the victim road. Man. She told me he, she had you, Honor. She told no, me that she I used didn't. to. She told me she used to sleep with him before. She cut it off. No, I but did not. She told me, I, I said, told, well, ain't no, cause I told I her, told, ain't no man I gonna be giving him. her no money without I, him not getting nothing in return. She said, oh, well, that we he's had just a friend of the family. Contact, never intercourse. Said, Sexual contact. What was sexual Never contact? What's sexual contact? You don't contact? know the difference between sexual contact sexual and intercourse? Contact? That means you sleeping with him. So explain the reason why is he so certain about not being the father. He stated that he at first believed that the baby is his, but later his mind rang a bell and he figured out that the dates don't add up in the window of conception. Did you believe it was your child then, Mr. Young? At first I did, but then when I started looking at the dates when the baby was born, the dates don't add up. The, the baby was due in August and she had her at the end of May, so how can I be my baby? Uh, my Hold on, let me see if I can understand this. Miss Nichols, do you remember the night you believe you conceived? I say around the middle of no November, around the 15th, give or take. Judge Lauren approved the lie detector test, and the results further fueled the situation when all the answers and results to the question were odd. What comes next will shake you. When we asked you if once you began a sexual relationship with Sean, did you have sexual intercourse with anyone else, you said yes. Yes. Wow. And the lie detector determined you were being truthful. Mr. Young, you seem surprised by that. No, I don't. I'm, just, I'm saying, wow, because I already knew that. Baby mama told the court that the sugar daddy does everything for the baby and alleged baby daddy does nothing for her, over which Mr. Young started a squabble like this. Has the man that Mr. Young refers to as the sugar daddy done anything for Sinai? He does everything for her. I wonder why. I can't call you. You know why you can't call me? Because you you constantly cussing me out, calling me B's and F's Stop and some of my like guns everything you could think of Stop underneath your like belt. One. There is too much confusion and blame in this trial, with no good coming out of it. And with that all said, let's move on to the conclusive part of this trial. Hopefully, it will bring happiness to the baby he has been longing for. Mr. Young, you are her father. Surprise, surprise. Oh. And I see tears in your eyes, because what do you feel in this Because, moment? like, his dad wasn't in his life. So he should know that how I would feel, how his mom felt. Break the cycle. Now we know this is your biological daughter. Yes, ma'am. A man and his fiance come to court to find out if he fathered a child with his old high school sweetheart, who is also seeing a man who is more than twice her age. However, Mr. Hammond is adamant that he's not the father and just wants a DNA test to prove it. Let's see what the plaintiffs have to say about it all. Mr. Hammond, you are here in court desperate for DNA results. You say the defendant went behind your back and opened a child support case, claiming you are the father of her four-month-old daughter, Niasia. You're hoping today's results will prove you are not the biological father before the child support order goes into effect. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. On the procession of trial, it came out that the plaintiff was seeing two girls at once. Seriously, doesn't he know that having two relationships at the same time is just asking for trouble? It's like wearing two different shoes together. What's the point? Ugh. So you were doing a back and forth, but at some point ended up dating both of these women at the same time. Like I said, you know. Like I said. Both of them, <laughs> both of them knew. Well, she didn't he know, He actually but said she that um, he's keeping her under, um, he didn't want her to know because he was just getting money from her. Oh my. The supposed baby daddy got both of his girlfriends pregnant at the same time. And even though he's got no shame, he's still out there playing his stupid games like nothing happened. Right, at that time, um, she got pregnant in March. So, um... Who did? She has a, a baby by him already. I got pregnant in August, she got pregnant in March. You were both pregnant at the same time. Right. While this young woman was pregnant with your child... Right, and I You were still out. having sex with Miss James. Yeah, of course. Nonetheless, the plaintiff was playing some serious mind games with the distraction tactics, but his cutthroat acting got Judge Lake all fired up and she shut him down hard like this. Stop whispering things over to your girlfriend. Let's stay on top. I know the plot of distraction. Right. Don't distract her from hearing the testimony that Miss James is gonna tell right. about what you were talking about to 
to her right. when she was already pregnant right. and the way you was lying back and forth so right. that you could keep having sex with two women. Mm. So Mr. Hammond has not even seen the baby. It turned out that he has no relationship with Ms. James' baby girl. That means he fully denied the baby and refused to do anything for her. That's a real deadbeat father. Do you have a relationship with Niaja, Mr. Hammond? No. Oh, you've never seen her? No. He said he's not gonna do anything for her until he finds out if he's the father or not. So you weren't there for the birth? No. You didn't even show up no. for doctor's appointment? But the other guy was. Oh, man. What is this happening in the courtroom? Defendant told the both supposed father that she might have his child, and today she is in court just conducting the elimination process of one alleged dad. But does he think he's her father? Have you told him he was? Okay, no, I, I did that smile. I, I told both of them, you know. Told him when I found out I was pregnant, like, I... I but you're too. opening up a child support case against Mr. Hammond. If the other guy already said he gonna take care of her and he's obviously got the money to do it, why didn't you put him on the child support paper? Or sign the birth certificate. Deceiving and dating the two at the same time can surely cause a lot of disruption in one's life. As you can demonstrate from this case, enough of their stubborn testimony. Let's watch what the DNA test envelope is holding for the little baby. Mr. Hammond, you are not the father. Okay. I'm just glad we just got it out the way. All right, now that we have the truth, we always talk about in this courtroom, we get one level of truth and then we seek a next level of truth. I said it before I opened the envelope and I know it to be true. This isn't over between the two of you. We know that infidelity has the potential to disrupt relationships and Ms. Walker, having admitted her out of the relationship, escaped leaves her boyfriend grappling with uncertainty. He appreciates her honesty, but is left questioning whether her 13-month-old son is his own. Uh, I've loved her since day one. We were working together, and uh, I've just been with her since then. I can see that that means something to you to hear that. It makes you emotional? Yes. Because you know he loves you very much. Yes, Your Honor. I, I hate that we split ways. I, he was my soulmate. And so there's a lot riding on today's results. Yes, Your Honor. Take me to the day you found out you were pregnant with Ben. Ms. Walker spilled the tea. She's been in this on-again, off-again thing with Mr. Khan for six years. But surprise, there's another dude in the picture. Plot twist. But poor Ms. Walker, hopelessly hoping that Bentley's daddy is Mr. Khan. I want the best for my son. He deserves the right to know. I feel that Jerry is the best choice. So you are admitting that there are other possibilities? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Khan has developed a relationship with your son? Yes, they have a very good bond. They're so good together. It makes me so happy to see them together, and Jerry deserves this more than anything. Let's talk about relationships. Ms. Walker and Mr. Khan had their fair share of ups and downs. They split for three years, and Ms. Walker found out her other man was cheating classic drama movie, but soon she ran back to Mr. Khan. However, she was pregnant by then. But you were also obviously sleeping with Mr. Khan because he wouldn't even be a possibility. I found out the other man had been unfaithful and then so I took off and I called Jerry and he let me come stay with him and um, that's when me and Mr. Khan hooked up. So Mr. Khan, do you remember that weekend? Well, if you had found out the other man was cheating, Ms. Walker, you were probably doing the same. Now is isn't that a classic stage for some divine karma happening to you? Hey! Anyway, she decides to play a game of paternity roulette. Been with both men on the same day. Yeah, you heard it right. Hospital, I was in a very emotional state of mind, and uh, we hooked up, and then I found out my father passed, and immediately went to his aid, and or whenever I got back home, she wasn't there, so I just figured she went back to the other guy. So you left again, Miss Walker? Yes, Your Honor. You say this was the love of your life, your soulmate, the other guy had cheated on you? What happens? Why you leave? Now, we're getting into the feels. Mr. Khan was all emotional, claiming Bentley as the potential heir to his legacy. But Ms. Walker's got doubts and was playing the who's the daddy game. They were both hoping for a happily ever after. But you just can't deny the reality, can you? Had sex with Mr. Khan that morning. Yes, Your Honor. But had sex with the other man that evening. Yes, Your Honor. It's not something I'm proud of. Whoa. <laughs> So at what point do you tell Mr. Khan I'm pregnant? Because at this point, we know what happened on that date. Whenever I went to the doctor, when I found out the conception date, I wasn't exactly sure what day his father had passed away. Both the plaintiff and the defendant had the last grain of hope remaining. They suspected Bentley might have scoliosis, and Mr. Khan was bullets, thinking he might have passed it down. But wait, we have Dr. Samantha for some clarification. It shows us that 38% of those cases are inherited from a parent. Oh, wow. 
That's huge. That is huge. That kind of lends itself to the potential that Mr. Khan could be Bentley's biological father since he has the condition. With that being said, we were at the climax. The DNA results were in the envelope and the atmosphere got thick with anticipation. What's it going to be? Will Bentley officially be Mr. Khan's mini-me or are we in for a paternity plot twist? Court was in session and it was time for the truth bomb to drop. Mr. Khan, you are not the father. Okay, this is the way to Ms. Johnson and her mom entered paternity court, alleging that the defendant had been a certified deadbeat dad. He never denied being the father of her baby, and everything seemed fine until two weeks ago when he suddenly insisted on a paternity test. My son was over his house. He was only over there five days, and he texted me like, you need to get your son, and I'm not getting him until I get a blood test, like. Out of the blue? Out of the blue, yes. And I have here some evidence, too. What kind um, of evidence? A message that I would Jerome, like to let me show see you. this. So wait, out of the blue, you all are co-parenting this little boy, how old is Jaden? Two years old, you're co-parenting him out of the blue, he said, come get your son? Yes. So, out of the blue, Mr. Taylor texts Ms. Johnson saying, get your son, I'm not keeping him until I get the DNA test done. And Jaden, the innocent two-year-old, is caught in the middle of this Facebook soap opera. How about we ask the potential daddy for some clarification? It was actually a week ago, um, me and my son was in the, in the house playing around. Um, I was told someone was outside for me. I went outside. A girl told me she had something to tell me about my baby, my baby mother. She said Miss Johnson told another girl that uh, that Jaden wasn't mine. So I inboxed Miss Johnson and told her. I don't want him another day. But wait, Mr. Taylor, didn't just step into the battle zone without any preparations. He also came along with evidence you wouldn't believe. How about you get a look into that before we move any further? Buckle up for some new type of confession. Um, I have actually I've never heard her say that. I've never heard her say that. I one time. has a recording saying she said he's not mine. So if you can hand this up. You have a recording? Yes. Oh, Jerome, let me hear that. Where know. is it, in the voicemails? Yes. So just hit play and I'll hear the voicemail. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. That's not your baby. That's not your baby. That you right. That's not your baby. Somebody else the daddy. Now we know where this whole case has been headed, right? Well, Miss Johnson, you know you can't unring that bell in a man's head. Once you say this, talk about some instant karma happening to you. It's better time now you realize this. You know that? Yes. Okay. I mean, you know once you say that to a man, he's never gonna forget that. They, men mm -hmm. forget a lot of things, right, Jerome? <laughs> but they don't forget that. And honestly, how could they? So you know you have a part to play in fueling this doubt, right, Miss Johnson? Yeah. I do have one paper that I would like to show you. I'd like to see that, Jerome. Um, what is this evidence showing? This is just basically his eczema that he had. So, Ms. Johnson, you know that you have a part to play in fueling the doubts of the defendant. But anyway, to support her claim, Ms. Johnson pulls out a list of medical similarities that the child has in common with the defendant. Um, what is this evidence showing? This is just basically his eczema that he has. Okay, the you child know. has eczema? Yes. Okay. And a heart murmur? And a heart murmur, yes. And, and a heart murmur. If you look at... Just like Mr. Taylor has. Awesome. And you believe that these are two medical issues that the child has in common with Mr. Taylor? Yes. Well, now we have stepped into medical expertise. So how about we call in the professional to shed some light on the developing case of paternity? Let's just find out if these medical similarities are hereditary or not. Great is question. there a genetic link? There is not a genetic link with heart murmurs. The majority of heart murmurs are innocent heart murmurs, meaning they're just changes in flow. They come on with either a newborn right at birth or they have, in an adult, they have something to do with pregnancy or things mm -hmm. like that. So heart murmurs, you know, for all of us that practice day in and day out are not genetic. Well, since now we have that part figured out. How about we focus on the DNA results? Because that's something which has a link with genes. So now here's Judge Lake wanting to take the curtain off from this mystery. Mr. Taylor, you are the father. Like I told you. Thank no, you. no, no. Like if you're not gonna, uh-uh. Don't start that nonsense. Thank you. Don't start that nonsense. Ms. Cates chimed in, giving her two cents to the court about how she and Mr. G hit it off at the club. Now, he's denying her two-year-old son, Messiah, all because of a little white lie she told. I was at the bar, um, we met through a mutual friend, and we just hit it off. I, You know, when I seen him, I just thought that he was the most handsomest guy I ever seen on this word, but. And so how soon after you met at the club did you start a sexual relationship? That's what I ain't lying. Okay, so did you start to develop feelings for her? Of course, you know what I'm saying, I mean, yeah. 
All right, you heard that part correctly, the same night. But wait, trouble in paradise. Mr. G started to catch those shady signs, like mysterious text messages. According to Mr. G, the baby mama wasn't all promiscuous until later in the relationship. Yeah, whatever. Text messages in your phone too, like yeah, girls whatever. be calling you too, don't do that. Like, I'm you well known, me, you well known where we from and girls be all over you. Come yeah, on. Yeah, that's why you're trying to pin that baby on me because I'm popping with this music stuff. <laughs> all right. Oh. All right, Kevin. Okay, I'm hood, okay. I'm hood, fam. All right, you whatever. Feel me? Like everybody <laughs> My city know me. That's right. Mr. G thought Ms. Cates was playing him because he was hood famous. Ms. Cates denied it and blamed it on his popularity. Then, Sis stepped in, claiming she saw Ms. Cates getting too cozy with other guys at the club. Talk about some real karma happening there. Cause she'll be in the club with this guy, that guy, and it'd be too close for comfort. You're not finna be all in this guy every time I turn around, all in this face. It was it was more than just no, dancing no, and all the extra no, It was more than no. that. No, how you won't there, so hush. It was no, more than that. That's not that's not what happened. And if I'm at the club, I'm gonna dance, I'm gonna socialize, because that's what you do at the club. I'm not gonna stand to hold up the wall. I don't do that. Wow. Uh well, we might have a feeling here that the baby mama just got caught cheating on the defendant. However, Ms. Cates did admit to a white lie she was seeing someone else while dating Ms. Mr. G. Oh, the drama. She insists the night Messiah was conceived, she and Mr. G were all in, with no room for the other guy. Mr. G, Miss Kate says she knows without a shadow of a doubt that you are her child's father. However, she says she was intimate with somebody else. Is that who you think her child's father is? Yes, y'all. Um... I... So, so wait, I, I want to understand this. So how, how did you get away with sleeping with two men at the same time? How did you keep each of them? Okay, I stayed two hours away from him. So that's how that happened. But at some point, Ms. Cates did drop the bomb claiming that she was pregnant, and that's where Mr. G's excitement goes on vacation. He doubts if he's the baby daddy, or did Ms. Cates inform the other guy? Yeah, she lied like that. Were you using protection with the other guy? Yes. <laughs> Is you serious? And why do you seem so sure she's lying, Mr. G? If, if we weren't messing around with condoms, I know she wasn't messing with him with no condoms. Yeah. So you said you two weren't using condoms, why would she be using them with the other guy? Correct. That don't even add Good up. Good question. Don't even add up. You met a, you meet you meet a person that you really don't even know. You let him, you let him smash the first night. No con or no nut. Mr. G, still unsure, talks about wanting a family for Messiah. Ms. Cates clarifies that she's still into Mr. G, but it's complicated. Yeah, right. We can see that, can't we? Anyway, here's the one last scoop on emotions. Tell the other guy. The other guy is non-existent right now. Because it's once you had the, the magical fun night, you never slept with the other guy again. Right. Man, she I, lying. You was there. No way. There's no way. So Messiah's two years old now. What kind of relationship do you have with him, Mr. G? I mean, it's a, it's a relationship. Sometimes it's like we here. So now it's time for Judge Lake to pull the curtain on the paternity triangle. It doesn't matter when you say she's lying, Mr. G. The one thing that matters to this courtroom is the DNA results. Let's see where to go from here. Mr. G, you are not the father. Mm, told you so. I'm sorry, Mr. G. I'm very sorry. I can see that that hurt to hear. Mr. Campbell was here to prove he was the daddy of a three-year-old named Zoe. But hold up, Miss Hopper's been doing some flip-flopping about who Zoe's real father was. Talk about trying two scoops in a single cup. Miss Hopper told you that you were the father. Yes. And then changed her mind. Yes. Every time we get into a fight, all of a sudden I'm not the father anymore. So when you're doing fine, you're the father. Yeah. Then when you get into an argument, you're not the father. Yes. Ms. Hopper, can you imagine the rush of emotions? Mr. Campbell must have gone through. I mean, no doubt you are standing in paternity court. That's probably karma happening to you. Let's find out what she has to say about this. So, Ms. Hopper, I only told him there was a possibility. I've never told him that he was the father. That's not true at all. That is true. That's he knew true. that it was between him and my ex-boyfriend since she was like six months old. Did she tell you from the beginning, Mr. Campbell, that it was you and possibly the ex the ex-boyfriend? No. Mr. Campbell reveals why this DNA test was his only option. Being Zoe's dad is his ticket to righteousness. Like he's making better life choices because of her. But guess what? Ms. Hopper, being insensitive to the man's needs, removes her ex from the shadows. I was actually seeing both of them at the same time. Um, and... So this and wasn't a cheating thing. This was a parallel thing. Pretty much, yes. Okay. What, what, this is what we want the truth. Go ahead. Um, and I just kind of thought maybe it was both of them. The day that they say she was conceived, 
I had seen both of them at the same time. So, Miss Hopper was playing a game of double dutch with her ex and Campbell at the same time. She confesses to seeing both guys on the same day Zoe was likely conceived. What a plot twist. Now it's a paternity roller coaster. Who's the real baby daddy? They slept with you? No. <laughs> okay, so that's why we're here. How long did you continue this parallel affair? Um, for about a month. And then I was with my ex-boyfriend. Um, he was pretty much started through the pregnancy. He was there. Your ex-boyfriend? Yes. So he went to doctor's appointments? Yes. Um, and I did give him her last name and he is on the birth certificate. Mr. Campbell's mom, Miss Joni, jumps into the ring with some Facebook receipts. She claims Miss Hopper messaged her, saying Campbell's the dad, but she's doing a 180, saying she only thought he might be the dad. You could have left the mother out of this mess at least. She says, I'm Elaine, I'm Jason's ex. I'm the one who thinks he is the father of my child. Oh, okay. And I said, okay, nice to hear from you. And she said, she said, thanks. That was cordial, mom. <laughs> We, we began to talk and, you know, we had a conversation and everything. And I did ask her, I said, you really believe he is the father? And she said, my daughter looks like him. He is really the only possibility. Things get confusing when Miss Hopper says Zoe used to look like Mr. Campbell, but now looks like her ex. What's the truth? Miss Hopper admits to some baby daddy flip-flopping, but it's all about the possibility. Hold on tight, because it's a wild ride of uncertainty. Hopper now, you just testified in court that you always maintain with Mr. Campbell that he was one of two options. Why would you tell his mother that he's the only possible father? When I contacted her, I said I thought that he was the father. Um, that's why I said Well, I the think. message reads, my daughter looks like him. He is really the only possibility. The moment of truth arrives. The DNA results are about to be revealed. Campbell's hoping he's Zoe's superhero, but we're on the edge of our seats. Let's see how these results turn out to be. The court is about to drop the bomb, and we're all ears, baby. Mr. Campbell, you are not the father. I'm okay. sorry. I know you really wanted to be her dad. Ms. Hopper, I wasn't sure where you were in this equation. I could never get a read. But I do see tears in your eyes in this moment. What are you feeling? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that he was. So, there's this wild episode on paternity court, right? You've got Ms. Barrett, Prego, and Clueless about who the baby daddy is. Classic, huh? She was pointing fingers at Mr. Mullinax, thinking he was the culprit for her unplanned parenthood. Hmm. Um, over a three-month period, I was sleeping with two different guys, my ex-boyfriend and Mr. Mullinax. Within, like, three months, I slept with him, both of them, about 50 to 60 times. 50 to 60? Oh. 50 to 60 times eat? No, I was sleeping with Mr. Mullinax, um, Thursday through Monday, and sleeping with my ex-boyfriend roughly Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now isn't that a beacon of honesty? Ms. Barrett also presented a conception calendar to the court. This woman claims she was juggling two dudes like it's a circus act. And here was the proof. Oh, boy. Talk about a busy schedule. Ms. Barrett? This is the most symmetrical <laughs> yes. color block calendar I have ever seen in this courtroom. If you look at that calendar, you'll see, I mean, it's it's clear. Me, me, him, 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 me, me, him, him, him. There's no telling whose baby that is. She couldn't get off her back long enough to decide who she wanted her baby's daddy to be. She then claims that Ms. Barrett was getting intimate with both men over three months and had those beautiful moments with Mr. Mullinax and her ex-boyfriend around 50 to 60 times each. Hmm. It feels like someone has been keeping tabs and was aware of what they were doing. No, I was sleeping with Mr. Mullinax um, Thursday through Monday and sleeping with my ex-boyfriend roughly Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. On a weekly schedule? Yes. Okay, before I even get to that, take me back. How did you meet? I met Mr. Mullinax um, through my ex-boyfriend. But wait, it gets better. Ms. Barrett met Mr. Mullinax through her ex's family. Yeah, you heard it right. His current wife is somehow related to her ex. Small world, huh? Anyway, the plot thickens, and Mr. Mullinax thinks she's an airhead. Classy introduction, right? How did this progress in your marriage? Well, my, me and my wife separated, and after we separated, me and that's when I began my relationship with her. Okay. I went over to her house the first time I went over there. Within 20 minutes, we were in the bedroom. Okay, so you had sex right away? Yes, the first time I actually met her, you know, the guy she was dating showed me a bunch of pictures, of naked pictures she had sent him and in the phone. The so, Ms. Barrett, why try to pin the baby on Mr. Mullinax when you had a clear idea that there was another man involved, eh? Now that's a mystery only you can solve, considering the uncertainty surrounding your incarcerated ex-boyfriend as a potential father, or the defendant being available. Pretty much because he was available. Listen, because Your Honor, could... she sent me a text and said she was pregnant. The next day she said she had a miscarriage, and then two days later she was pregnant. 
that is again. a lie. So I have never I've had said doubts that. The yes, whole you did. Time. You sent the text. When her and I first got yeah. together, I saw multiple text messages in her phone from other guys talking about when are you going to let me get another one of those world famous, her reputation around the city. If this isn't karma, what else? With all those allegations and doubts in mind, when Mr. Mullinax came to know that Ms. Barrett was pregnant, he immediately denied the baby. Now, isn't that karma in the face of the plaintiff? More than likely, I'm not the father. The ratio. Yeah, I mean, compared you to her sleeping, how many guys? <laughs> yeah, yes, ma'am, kind of, because, I mean, if you're sleeping with so many people, how can you tell who the baby's dad is just by... You know? But there were two, she says, so that math of 50-50, which is a great probability. All right. With all the doubts and clarifications set down on the table, Judge Lake decides to pull out the concealed envelope, and with that, she also pulls out the fate of the child and the baby mama. Let's dive into the results and see what happens. Mr. Mullinax, you are the father. <laughs> Boy, if you don't get over there and at least see if she's okay and she's carrying your child over there crying, step over there.